Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and I'm here back in my industrial craft build craft testing world because I'm going to show you guys uh, some updates that have occurred to an add on that I've recently featured, I'm going to say a little bit ago. This is the force field generator, which is an add on for industrial craft, and it looks like the new name of this mod is the modular force field system, and it's pretty cool. Um, now, you can see there's a bunch of blocks here. So, uh, Right now, there's like a ton of different blocks that you can use to create all kinds of different force fields and do all kinds of different neat things. Um, so right now, it's modular force field system version 1.0. Um, I believe it's version beta 2. And without further ado, I'm going to get started here and just show you how each of these blocks work. Now, typically, I'll go through and create um, the crafting patterns and show you how to craft each of these items, but they're all listed neatly and conveniently in the thread that I'm going to link in the description of this video. So for now, I'm just going to TMI myself the um, items to show you how they work, just so you guys can understand, because it's a pretty complicated mod, and I want to cover each of these items um, without slowing it down by crafting them uh, with the recipes. So let's get started. So the first two items you're going to have to craft, and again you can find the recipes on the forum post, is the force field generator core and the force field generator core EU injector. And let's find those guys in TMI right now. This is your force field generator core, and this is your force field generator core energy unit injector. And these two items are going to come together to pretty much drain energy from an MFSU and transmit it over to your force field generators. Now the other thing I'm going to need to do here is grab some levers because I'm going to need to activate this with a redstone signal. So let's place down our force field generator core and see what happens. Oh, nothing happened. So why is that? Um, you cannot feed your energy units directly into a force field generator core. You have to use an EU injector. So if I place down my EU injector, ah, now the guy is connected, good. So if I try and right click on this, we'll see there's no interface. So I'm gonna get my force field generator core, which I was just telling you about, and place that down. And you need to place that on top of your EU injector. So to repeat, the EU injector must be beneath the core, okay? Now if we right click on the core, we can see this pretty crazy complicated thing and we're probably wondering, whoa, what's going on? Don't worry, it's pretty easy. Uh, let me place down this guy here. Now, this is the range of the transmitter. So the way this core works is you're going to place some items in the world that will generate force fields, and they have to be within eight blocks of the force field generator core. And then they'll be able to draw energy from the force field generator core. Right now, we don't have any projectors linked. Zero. And the frequency that we're transmitting on is 921. We can go ahead and lower that and make it just frequency one for simplicity's sake. Now, if we activate a redstone current here, we'll see the graphics change on this guy, and it starts drawing energy out of the MFSU that's behind me. And it'll drain and drain and drain and drain, and cool. Now we've got a million energy units stored in here. Perfect. And we drew it right out here out of the MFSU. So let's turn this guy off, and we'll see it's just sitting comfortably at one million. Now there are two upgrades that we can give to the core. We can get the force field generator range upgrade and the storage upgrade and they kind of do exactly like they sound. The range upgrade, um, and by the way each upgrade has to be placed on one of the four sides, so I'm just going to place this range upgrade on this side. We can now see that the transmit range is 16, which means we'll be able to transmit our energy further away. And if you're not following that bit, don't worry, it'll become pretty clear in a moment. And if we place down our storage upgrade, we'll see that we can now store a little bit more energy. If we activate the lever, we're storing up to 1.25 million energy units, which is cool. And we could probably throw another range or two on there if we wanted to get further range or more storage. It's really up to you guys what you want to do. But for now, I'm going to take the storage off there. It's not important. And I'm also going to take the range off because I'm going to keep it simple just for this demo. Now let's talk about how we generate a force field. There are four machines currently, and I think he has a couple more planned, believe it or not. Um, this list here are the four machines that we've got. We've got the area projector, we've got the field deflector, we've got the directional projector, and we've got the tube projector. So that's pretty cool. 
Um, so area projector, deflector, directional projector, and tube projector. Let's check out each of these in turn. So I've created a little platform up in the sky here, and there's a reason for it. I'll explain it in a moment. But this is where I'm going to be demoing each of these force field blocks. So let's start with the area projector. If I place this guy down on the ground, like so, we can see this crazy interface again. Um, now the force field available power is currently zero, and we have a receiver frequency. If we set the receiver frequency to be the same as the transmitter on the core that we just placed down, and hit set, just double check this guy is set to one. We'll determine that we might be a little bit out of range. I think we're further than eight blocks. So let's go and check this guy out and lay down that range extender again. We are now up to a transmit range of 16 blocks and we can see that we've got available force field power. So setting this to zero again, it's no longer connected, but setting it to one, we're now connected and linked to generator. Linked to generator is true, which is cool. And if we look back down here, we'll see that we're linked to one projector. Double cool. So that's the deal with the range that I was telling you guys about a moment ago. So this force field projector needs to be within range of the force field um, core here. Next, we can determine the radius and what type of mode this guy is going to project in. So right now, let's leave it with the default. The smallest radius we can have is 4, and the cube is the uh, default mode here. So let's get ourselves another lever and activate it. Oh, nifty. Look at that. We've got this cool force field cube. And we can see that we're landing on the ground down here just below it. Very, very cool. And if we turn it off, it's off again. Pretty simple and straightforward. We'll also notice that we used a little bit of power. That's the power getting transmitted from over here. This guy's run out a little bit of power. And if we activate this lever again, it'll refill. And of course, we could leave that lever activated all the time to make sure that it constantly stays filled. Now let's check out the other mode, which is sphere. If we activate this guy, it's kind of a little sphere. It might be a little bit hard to tell in the video, but uh, you know, it does the best approximation of a sphere that it can in a block built world. And of course, we can change it back to cube and expand the radius. So if we bumped up to six, we'd have a much bigger cube. Pretty nifty. Whoa, look at that. That is cool. So let's bring it back down to four. So that is the area projector. That's the basic gist. Nothing too crazy, and it's pretty obvious how it works once you see it. Next up, let's check the force field deflector. This is another force field. Now this one happens to have a directional block. So if I place it down in the world like so, you can see that it's facing at me with its output block, just like a lot of industrial craft blocks you're familiar with. And we can right click on a side with a wrench to change the direction that the output is. Pretty cool. So let's just have it going up for a moment. And the interface again, we want to set the receiving frequency to 1 to match up with the guy we had before. We can set our x and z distances and how far away we want it to be. So let's set it up to be two blocks away with an x and z of 4 each. There you go. And if we set it to an x and z of 1 each, let's say like that, then you can see it goes like that. So that's one and one, one and one. So one block on each side of the center. If we lowered the distance a little bit, you'd see it come down a little bit closer to me. And if we raise the distance a bit, it would go up a bit further away. We can also increase just the X or just the Z. Pretty cool. And that's the force field deflector. All right, next up we've got the force field directional projector. Uh, so let's go ahead and give this guy a good whack so it's facing upwards. You can see all this has is length and distance. So right now it's got no power, so let's set it to frequency one. 
and right now it's set now to length of one. And we can activate it and it projects up one block. We can set the length to four and it sets up to four blocks. And of course distance will make it just create those four blocks further away. And that's pretty much it. And that's the directional projector. Finally, we've got the tube projector. This guy is pretty cool actually. If you look at him here, we'll set our frequency to one. You've got radius, length, and orientation. So let's activate it with the default. Radius of two, length of one, orientation center. Okie dokie, that's cool. Let's bump up our radius a little bit. All right, so now I'm starting to see what this is doing. Let's go ahead and bump up our length. Ah, this would be a great way to create a tunnel. Definitely the intention here. But what's the deal with this orientation? Well, this guy's currently in the center of this little tunnel, but maybe we want him to be at the front or the beginning. If we set this orientation to beginning, then it creates it here and upwards. Pretty spiffy. So we could have this awesome cool tunnel going straight up and down. But remember, it's orientatable, so we could have it like this. How cool is that? Very cool. And maybe if we set the radius down a little bit. Yeah, now we're starting to see some potential. I mean, if we really had this thing set up properly, it could be pretty cool. Let's try it here, up here. Ah, that's what I was looking to do. A nice nifty tunnel. So that covers the force field tube projector. Pretty cool, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but it gets the point across of how it works. So now we're going to go into some of the upgrades that we can place on these guys. Um, the first upgrade is the force field directional extender. Unfortunately, that's bugged in the current version, so I can't show you how that works. Um, so I'll move on to the next one. Uh, so let's take a look at the force field inhibitor upgrade. So in order to demonstrate exactly what this guy does, let me get my uh, stuff back in order the way I had it a moment ago. I'm going to place down my area projector, like so, and I'm going to set the radius to be, let's say, 7, and it's a cube. Let's make it 6. Sure, that sounds good. All right, cool. Now let's place down our frequency inhibitor, our uh, force field inhibitor upgrade on the right side of it. And you can place it on any side, I believe. All right, doesn't seem to be doing too much. Let's go down here and place on the ground our force field directional projector. I'm also going to link this to frequency one and give it a length of 10. Cool. And let's go ahead and put a lever down so we can activate this guy. All right, so we've got this neat little thing going up here. What happens if we turn on this inhibitor while that guy's there? Oh, it got rid of it. Even though this guy's still on, pretty cool. Now, if this inhibitor upgrade was not here, and notice that as soon as I turned it off, the force field came back on this machine. And with the inhibitor upgrade turned off, this force field block is still here. So that's what the inhibitor does, is inside the field of this force field area projector, if there's an inhibitor upgrade attached, it disables any force fields other than itself. Pretty cool. And that is only an upgrade that can be attached to the area projector. So that's the force field inhibitor upgrade. Next up is the dome upgrade. Now, as you guys saw, we'll keep this at radius 6 as a cube. It creates this cool thing all around you. And if we shrink this down just a little bit to 4, we'll see that it actually creates a cube all the way around this block. Now, if we change this with a dome upgrade and turn it on, 
it only creates the blocks above it, and it does not create any force field anywhere beneath it. So it creates a dome, basically. It does not create blocks underneath. And again, for the difference, if I take it off now, we can see that it's creating all around again. So that's what the dome upgrade does. Next up to show you guys is the subwater upgrade. And rather than building an underwater thing here, I just went ahead and created a block of water. Because I think you've seen the subwater upgrade before um, in my prior video. But basically, if you create one of these projectors underwater and turn it on, it will create a force field around you, but it won't remove the water that's inside the projector field. So if you'd like to do that, you can place your subwater projector upgrade here and turn this guy on and it'll remove every block of water that's inside that field. So that way you can have an underwater uh, base, and when you activate the projector, it you know removes all the water, and if it's deep enough underwater, once you turn off the projector, any source blocks that are above you will basically rain back down and refill the lake. So I think I showed that in a prior video, so rather than setting all that up again, um, look back at the prior video on the holographic projector for an idea on how to use the subwater upgrade. Now there's one more upgrade I haven't covered yet, and that's the Hardener upgrade. So let's put this guy on and activate our force field. I'm going to be honest with you guys, I don't know what this does. I've looked all over the forum post and I can't figure it out, so I've already posted asking. Um, so what I'm going to do is try and figure out exactly what this Hardener upgrade does. It may be bugged in the current version and it's not having an apparent effect, or maybe I just can't figure out what its effect is. But for now, just know that that exists, and maybe by the time you watch this video, I will have figured it out and edited the video with a note about exactly what the projector hardener upgrade does. Um, but for now, just keep it in the back of your mind. So those are the three upgrades that you can get for your uh, projectors. Now, keep in mind, this guy's got even more plans in the future. If you remember, one of his prior versions had a camouflage uh, mode where you could check it out and have it like do like... Um, it was called a holographic projector, and it would pretty much create a hologram of whatever block type you want. I'm pretty sure he's planning on adding that back in as a new block type, so I think he has some other things planned as well. So again, this is version 1.0 beta 2 of the modular force field system. It's really pretty neat, and it's really coming along pretty well. Um, the guy's, you know, adding all kinds of crazy awesome stuff, and his interfaces are really pretty good. So go ahead and check out this mod, and I can't wait to see what is coming up in the future. Alright guys, this is Direwolf20 signing off. You can check in the description of this video to get a link to this add-on, which is for industrial craft, of course. Take it easy.